Okay, so last video we set up some units here and made the selection decal. Uh, and now I'm going to set up uh, the functionality for marquee selection. And uh, to get started with that, I'm going to make a new blueprint here. And I'm going to search under all classes here and find HUD and make it a HUD class blueprint. And I'll call this RTS underscore marquee HUD. All right, and I'm also going to uh, make a new player controller. So previously we put a couple of uh, nodes into the existing player controller for this template. Uh, now we're gonna switch to using our own. So I'm gonna just right click here, make a new blueprint, uh, player controller, RTS underscore player controller. All right. Uh, and now what I want to do is I'm going to go to project settings and I'm going to search uh, DEF here and that'll bring up my uh, default game mode and uh, default pawn class, etc. Uh, and here's where I want to set my HUD class. I'm going to change this to my RTS marquee HUD and my player controller class uh, from the top down controller to my RTS player controller. And I'll close that and I'll just quickly go in my top down folder here, blueprints, top down controller, and I'm gonna grab these nodes we made in the first video. I'll just press uh, Control X to cut and I'll open up our new player controller. And I'll just paste those in here. Okay. And so uh, I'm going to start out here in the player controller. Uh, this is where we're going to receive the input. And so this is where I want to get a uh, left mouse button event. That's what I'm going to use to draw our selection rectangle, uh, our marquee selection. So we'll say left mouse button. And we get uh, a pressed and a released. What we don't get is a held pin. So we don't get any event firing when the button is being held down and we need to use that for some of our logic. So we're going to create that state ourselves here. I'm just going to go to variables, uh, make a new variable. I'm going to call this is left mouse uh, pressed question mark. And uh, I'll just drag this out here with alt for a set node, control D. And when we press the left mouse button, we'll set that to true. When we release it, we'll set it to false. And now I'll drag this up here with control for a get node, use a branch. And from the event tick, we're going to check if the left mouse button is pressed. All right, so uh, I've basically got now a pin out here for pressed, released, and while it's being held down. So now I want to communicate those events to my marquee HUD blueprint. And uh, so to communicate uh, stuff to another blueprint, I'm going to make an interface. So I'm going to right click here, blueprints, blueprint interface, and I'll call this RTS underscore interface. And I'll open that up here and I'm going to make some functions here called, uh, let's say marquee uh, pressed and another function called marquee uh, held and one more marquee released. Okay, uh, and now in my player controller, I'm gonna go to class settings and in, uh, under interfaces here, we'll add that RTS interface and I'll compile. And uh, what I want to do here is uh, we want to communicate to our HUD class blueprint. So I'm going to right click and say get HUD. And uh, from the return value here, I'm going to say uh, pressed, we'll get marquee pressed. And I'll plug that in here. Okay, and uh, then I'm gonna drag off here again and get the released, marquee released message. Plug that in here. And uh, I'll just drag off of here again and get marquee held message. 
and we'll plug that in here. All right, so that's the basic setup here in the player controller that's going to send uh, a message to the HUD class when we press, hold, or release uh, the mouse, the left mouse button. All right, so let's go to the other side here. We're going to open up the marquee HUD blueprint, and I'm going to go to settings under interfaces here, add the RTS interface. And I'll compile, go to event graph, and now I can respond to those events. Uh, so I'm just going to actually delete all of these, and I'll make uh, event pressed and uh, event uh, marquee held, marquee released, and uh, one more event here. Uh, that we can only get in the HUD class, the reason we're using the HUD class, uh, we can receive event draw HUD. All right, and that's going to let me draw something directly to the screen here. And so uh, we'll get started here. What I need to do is make a couple variables. I'm going to say uh, mouse, let's say start mouse position. Uh, I'll set that to a vector 2. And another variable here I'm going to call uh, current mouse position, uh, also a vector 2. And one more here, and I'm going to call this is, uh, oops, is drawing, question mark, and that's going to be a Boolean. Uh, and we'll set that up right away first here. Uh, is drawing, I'm going to pull that out with Alt here. We're going to set that when we press the button. Uh, and then we're going to uh, set that to false when we release the button. And uh, okay, what I want to do here is when we first press the button, I want to get player controller. And I'll drag from that and get mouse position. I'm going to find out where's the mouse, and we want to save that in our variables here. So I'm just going to drag this uh, start mouse position with Alt, uh, split the pin here, I'll plug it in, and we'll plug in the X and the Y location. Uh, and then I'm going to grab the current mouse position, we'll also set that. So every time we've clicked the mouse, we're resetting the start and the current position to wherever we're at. I can just uh, feed that in right there. Okay, and so that's pretty much it. I'm going to grab this and say uh, type C, uh, we'll call this uh, marquee start. All right, and uh, for held, what we need to do is grab these two nodes here, the player controller, get mouse position, control D, and uh, set the current mouse position. I'll split the pin here and plug these in. So while we're holding down the button, we're updating the value of current mouse position. Uh, and I'll just grab this C and say marquee held. Okay, and uh, this will be marquee released for now. Nothing else to do just yet. And now we'll worry about drawing the actual uh, rectangle. So the first thing we're going to do is check is drawing. And we're only going to do something if is drawing is true. And if it is, we're going to draw rect. OK, and so this will make the actual rectangle on the screen. And I can plug in a color here. We'll make it, say, maybe blue. And uh, the alpha, maybe 0.2. So it's mostly transparent. And then uh, the X and the Y position, that's easy. We're just going to get our start mouse position. And I'll split the pin here, plug in the X, and plug in the Y. And uh, now we need to plug in a width and a height. So I have to do a little bit of math here. I'm going to get the current mouse position. I'll split the pin here. And I'm going to take uh, the current x position and subtract from that 
I'm going to subtract the starting x position, and that'll give us our width. Uh, and then same thing here for the y. I'm going to take the current y, subtract, and uh, we'll subtract the starting y, and that'll give us our height. OK, and so, so far that's going to draw the rectangle, uh, but there's no other functionality yet. We're going to be able to draw the rectangle, but it's not going to do anything just yet. So let's try that out and see where we're at with it. OK, uh, so this is working so far. I can draw a rectangle. And now we just want to add some functionality to see what's under the rectangle and select these actors. So the next thing I'm going to do here is, after drawing the uh, rectangle, uh, we'll say, uh, I'm just going to actually right click here, say actors. Uh, in selection rectangle. And this is another handy function that is uh, part of the HUD class um, that's going to just return for us all of the actors underneath a rectangle. And we can indicate uh, the size of the rectangle just by saying first point here, start mouse position, and second point, current mouse position. And then it's going to uh, tell us all the actors underneath that. I'm going to set the filter here to just actor, so it's going to return everything. And I'll uncheck this uh, so it only includes colliding components. And from the out actors here, I'll say for each. And we'll plug this in. And we'll iterate through all these actors. And what I'll do is I want to uh, send a message to the actor through the interface to select. So first we'll go to the interface. And I'm going to add a function here. We'll say uh, select unit. And another function, deselect unit. And I'll compile that. And I'll go to the parent unit class. And on the event graph here, uh, I'm going to respond to those events here. We'll uh, event select. Uh, oops, first I need to implement the interface. So class settings, and oh, I'll expand these. Under interfaces, we need to add the RTS interface, compile, and now I can right click and say event. Uh, select unit. And I'll also get the event deselect unit. And uh, pretty simple for this. All I'm going to do here is grab the selection decal here, the component, drag it in, drag from that, set visibility. And uh, I'll drag from that again here, set visibility. And we're just going to set the visibility to uh, true when we select the unit and false when we deselect. All right, so uh, let's see, I'll close that for now and go back to the marquee HUD here. And we were going to iterate through all of the actors under the rectangle. And so I'll just start out by saying, let's say we just send them a message to uh, select unit. All right, and we'll take a look at that. All right, and so that works. We've selected those units, um, but we haven't put in any logic for deselection yet. So if I click over here, or if I say make another selection, it doesn't deselect these units. It just added these units to the selection. So the next thing we have to do is uh, work with uh, work out for deselection. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the marquee HUD here. And uh, first thing I have to do here is I want to keep track of what units we have selected. So I'm going to make a new variable here called selected units. And I'll set the type here to actor. And I'll make it an array. And what I'll do here is just drag this and get and say add unique. And I'll plug this in here. And I'll pipe in the array element. So each actor gets added to this uh, array as they get selected. All right. Uh, so the next thing I want to do here then is after we have iterated through all of the uh, 
actors under the rectangle and added any new ones, I want to check this whole array to see if there's any under there, uh, or sorry, any in there that aren't under the uh, rectangle anymore. So on the completed node here, uh, we'll do, I'll just grab the selected units here, control D to duplicate and make a four each. And we'll plug this in. And uh, I want to go through and make sure they're still under the rectangle. So, but rather than do the get actors again, uh, we've already done it, so we should just save the output here and reuse it. So I'll say uh, promote to variable, and I'll call this uh, actors in rectangle. Okay, and we'll plug in the execution here, and I uh, can just plug this pin in that way now. All right, and so now that I've saved it there, I can grab it back over here and get. And I want to drag from that and say find. And I want to find the selected unit as uh, from the uh, array, as we iterate through the array. And if it doesn't find that in there, it's going to return a negative 1. So it's meant to return the index number where it does find an item. And if it doesn't, you get a negative 1. So we'll use a branch here. And if we do get a negative one back, then we know that we've got a selected unit in the array that isn't under the rectangle anymore. And so we want to remove it. We want to deselect it. So first I'll grab from the array element here and we'll say uh, deselect unit. And uh, I'll just put a node here and route it this way, make it a bit nicer. Uh, and so we'll deselect the unit and then I'm going to drag from here again and we also want to uh, remove it from uh, the selected units array. So I actually need to just grab the selected units reference here, control D uh, and say remove item. And we'll plug this in right there. Okay, uh, so that's pretty much it. Now that's going to allow us to uh, select units as we cover them with the rectangle and deselect them if we, uh, if we back off the rectangle. So let's check that out. Okay, I'll select all these units here and let's say I say, oh, I only actually want these three uh, and that's the correct behavior. Unselect them as I move the rectangle off of them. All right, perfect. So that pretty much covers what I'm going to cover in this tutorial. And um, in the next video, I'm going to look at how we can get these units moving around. So we'll be able to select some units, right click somewhere, and they'll move to the new location. All right, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.